Revolver Underground. What's going on, guys? E-Rock here, Revolver Underground, doing another Skype interview, and I am here with Jan Daniel James the Third. What's going on, man? What's going on? Not much. <laughs> well, you are um, you are a very busy guy. What what's going on with you right now? Well, uh, of course, I just finished Hillbilly Hand Fishing, um, which was crazy, <laughs> and now working on a spinoff from that. Um, but it really doesn't have anything to do with fishing. Right. It has more to do with death. But you know. <laughs> well, you know, I've seen I've seen some stuff on Hillbilly Hand Fishing. I think death might be a part of that at some point. Man, those those fish can bite you pretty hard. Yeah, it did. It got me real good. How how did this come about? How did you um, find out about uh, handbilly hill fishing? Hill fishing? Handbilly hill fishing? Hillbilly hand, hand fishing. fishing. <laughs> um, I did a show um, about three years ago called ABC Crash Course, and it got picked up, but it didn't do so well. So that was the end of that journey. But the casting directors from that show kept my name in their database, and we actually just sat around for three years, almost four years, and then they called saying, hey, we have a you know this show that we think you'll be great for. And without saying anything, you know, or looking at it or investigating what it was, I said yes. <laughs> and I had no idea to what this was. I mean, had no idea to what it was, the extent of what it was. Oh, man. So what was your initial reaction when you finally found out, oh, this is what I'm going to be doing? Um, I was a little nervous. <laughs> I had planned on, I had ordered a, a box of Pinot Grigio. I had planned on getting drunk before it was my turn to go <laughs> in the water. But they switched up the stuff first, oh. and I, I had no opportunity to get drunk, so I had to go first. <sighs> That was a little unsettling, and my, you know, I don't, we have this term called bubble guts, where I mean, everything in in my stomach just turned, and I was just so nervous, and because my plan was to watch someone else do it first, right? Then I can kind of see what it was about, and you know, what the contents were, and and to see if I was actually going to live, yeah, <laughs> um, through this. But because I had to go first, um. Yeah, none of that just none of that happened. Man. None of that happened. None of that none of it happened that I could actually get a chance to grasp what this was about because right. I wouldn't watch the show before I went. Right. So, is there you know, I, well, I'm I'm in the same boat. I don't I don't ever like going first. I like to see what's going on. I'm just like you, I like to see what's going on, but you right. know, I guess how first of all, how does this how, how does this work? You you're, you're what what is hillbilly hand fishing? I mean, what what's going on here? You're pretty much the bait, <laughs> and you're using your feet as you're on the reel and you're on the hook, and now you yourself, your feet and your hand have been cast into the river, and then you have to go back off in the hole under the burrow in the bank, and you have to wiggle your feet around. And oh, sorry, that's all right. Okay, so you have to wiggle your feet around, and you have to wait for the fish to decide to latch on to your foot. Wow! And then you have to keep him on your foot until he can. We can bring him to the edge of the bank of the river, <laughs> and then get him off. And they, they uh, people, people actually do this just because. They do it just for fun. Can you imagine? I don't understand. I don't. Just I don't, for fun. I mean, they they have fishing poles now. You can you can use those. Thank you. But <laughs> apparently, the, the the catfish are so they don't come. They don't like coming out in the you know swimming. They uh, like to stay back in their in the back where they're protecting their dens and wow. the the. The female fish has her eggs back there, and then the male fish is back there. So they're back there where they can't, you know, you can't really get a reel. So you have to use something else other than a reel. So it requires now hand and feet mm. um, maneuvering to get the lure the fish out and get them out. So and we're talking 30, 40, 50, 60-pound fish what? and even higher. Yeah. 
Jeez. Mine was 34 pounds. Wow. So, and yeah. you, you, you caught this thing with your foot. Yes. How, how, how did that, I mean, it, it, obviously it, it would hurt at some point, but what was that, how did that feel? Um, <laughs> the initial, the initial part of it was, okay, he's, this thing, something just bit me. But the next part was he started gripping on my foot and it's just like sandpaper and a sledgehammer on my foot. Oh, man. And, yeah. So what are the consequences of this? I mean, it's it's got to be at some point severe, right? Yeah. Well, um, we're talking um, the skin being scraped off of your foot. Oh my the um, you know my my left foot was just in agony for days because it was so sore um, because he he caught right on the top of that the bone that's on the top of your foot oh, yeah. and just sat there and I had to go in after mine three times. So that was const- continuous. Yeah, I had oh, to go in three times because he kept getting off my foot. Wow. So I mean, I don't understand. I guess these people they they don't care that it hurts. They just keep doing it. I mean, what's the point? Oh no! They, listen, Jackson and Skipper are immune to pain. They live. I think sometimes that they live for pain. Oh, I think God. that they're the opposite. They would die if they didn't have any pain. Wow. They go out catching snakes like they're just little rubber things. Little, you know, they act like these snakes are rubber snakes, you know, because you have all these elements out there, you know, and, they, you know, they see a beaver. They don't run. They go towards the beaver. You know, this beaver can <laughs> amputate your foot. And that's the other thing, too. You just never know if there's a beaver inside of that hole um, because those beavers initially dug those holes. So oh, wow. the fish move in the, the holes where the beavers used to live. So now you don't even know if when you're sticking your feet in there, if it's a beaver or a fish in there. <sighs> man, it's it's a gamble at that point, man. That, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know that I would. Uh, I don't know that I'd be OK with that. I mean, I think, you know, I think for you, though, it was better because you had no idea what was going to happen. I think if you know, at least for me, if I had the idea of what was going to happen, I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm not going to do that. That's not going to happen. Right. Well, and unless I mean, I was just, it was a rewarding experience afterwards, right? you know, doing it and getting the, the notch under my belt saying, wow, I've actually went hillbilly handfish. I mean, I actually noodled, that's the word for it. Noodling. And I've caught a fish, you know, and the first fish and then the fish being 34 pounds. It was great. It was huge experience, man. I mean that's a that's a big fish to be lashed on to your foot, uh, not only once but three times. Three times, yeah. A big old bag of craziness right there. So so then, yeah. what's uh, what's the? Is this just for fun for you guys to go on the show and do this, or is it a contest? What's what's happening here? It was fun. It was like it was a contest. They divided us up into teams, and we got a trophy. No ah. money, trophy. <laughs> so at the end of the day. Um, you know, it was it was a great experience. It was a great bonding experience, but I don't know that I would ever do it again because right. that's some craziness. <laughs> now that I look back at it, that's some craziness. Every time I watch the episode over and over again, I say, I get nervous. Like, I have to do it again. That's how it, it's just like, oh, my God. It's <sighs> like these, you know, I am just like, you're in your territory out there. The fish are out there. Leave them alone, you know. But I did say, you know, being a flight attendant, I said that if a plane that I was on ever went down, <laughs> one thing about it is that we were going to eat. If nothing else, we were going to eat because now I have this skill yep. that I can teach the crew members and the passengers. <laughs> we're going to eat. You're going noodling. Oh. If you don't, you don't know how, you're going to learn today. You know, I think that's actually uh, resume worthy right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Absolutely. man, that is a uh, man. I can't I just I can't wrap my head around. I mean, the first time I heard about this, I just could not figure out why anybody would want to do this. But at the same time, it, it's cool. I mean, you know, you you can, like you said, you can put that under your belt now. You've done it. It's something that you uh, you can call that a skill. It definitely takes skill. Yeah. For sure, yeah, it's it is true. It is yeah. It is a skill. Um, like I said again, one that I think that will just be that one time <laughs> skills. They were talking about an all stars. I don't know. Yeah. I have to think about. It. <laughs> 
So what's uh, what's this kind of what, what's this publicity? What's this show gained you? I mean, is there a lot of parties that you've been able to go to? Is there a lot of red carpets that you've been able to attend? I've been able to do, do a lot of things through it, and um, it's been an amazing experience. You know, a lot of people didn't really know the hype, but now they caught on with the second season, and they're like, "Wow, this is great!" You know, uh, they they're interested more in. The, you really did this and how was it you know doing this and and they want to just talk about step by step i don't really want to relive all the steps by yeah. step but you know i'll tell you if you want to know the step by steps you know but if you really want to know you can go right out there and do it yourself yeah. and really get one on one you know because I, i've never camped i never been camping i never been in a river yeah. i never been done a lot of that stuff so actually i was able to check a lot of things off my list just by going out there doing it it was great. It was wonderful. But I don't I don't like snakes that much. I don't yeah. like giant grasshoppers that are big as your head. I don't <laughs> like them that much. Um, I don't like um, beavers. You know, I let them stay in their territory. You know, wild hogs, um, you know, tornadoes or just spinning dust, dust storms. Um, all of those things, I just let, you know, I prefer just to let them stay out there where they are. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Was there a um, like a process of elimination for you to be on the show, or were they just taking applications and whoever came? We did the audition. Um, heard back in two days. It was a quick process. They they saw myself um, and my friend that went on, and they immediately called back, said, you know, and it was like fifteen thousand people that applied, and they knew that they wanted us on the show and it actually went over well the executives from animal planet and the um production company said that our episode was the fa their favorite nice. um yeah <laughs> and it wasn't that we were given a show all that was real i mean yeah. i was yeah. petrified you know <laughs> i was like seriously it was like crazy and everybody else too it was raw emotions and uh, so you know i'm i'm really like this is crazy yeah definitely not believe I'm, we're doing this yeah i'm black I, yeah, exactly. we do like this. <laughs> oh man definitely an unforgettable experience uh yeah. well what's uh you know you said you had uh, some other stuff maybe a spinoff is there anything you can tell us about what's going on with this well I am. Um, they, they. I guess I gave them such dramatics on the show that they felt like it needed to continue, <laughs> and so um, the producer of Hillbilly um, explored an opportunity for me to have a spinoff, um, which is surrounded about is surrounded death, um, but it's death in a non-traditional way um it's going to be a little quirky a little insight to um funeral directors but not the morbid um dark you know huh. grand reaperish type of thing it's going to be interesting it's going to be fun um educational exciting wow but funny and so yeah is there uh, is there a release date for this? Are you guys still talking about it, or what's going on with that? We are. They're at, we're actually shopping right now. Well, they're actually shopping right now, and we're actually heard back today and get a lot of great feedback. So we'll see, um, you know, who picks it up. Yeah. And <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be great. The we we shot a um, a sizzle pilot for it, and it was actually amazing. It's it's actually amazing. Wow. Well, I, yeah, it's, I'm excited. I'm, uh, yeah, I just, you know, when I heard when I heard about uh, what was going on and all that good stuff that was happening with you, I just, I kind of wanted to, I wanted to know, I wanted to see what was going on and and what your uh, thoughts were on that. But is there, uh, is there, is there something about doing a reality show that just makes you want to come back to that? Um, it's fun. You know, you get to be yourself. You get to be uh, somebody else one minute and be myself the next. And I get to explore all my different personalities and all of my different, um, well, uh, everybody say I have alter ego. So I get to be <laughs> the fun Daniel and I get to be the crazy Daniel. And I think that it just shows who you are. and You just get to be who you are and let the world see who you are. Um, but it's just, it's, it's, it's different, you know, I don't think, I don't know if I could be an actor, but I get to act 
the way that I act um, right. on the show and make people laugh. That's fun. That's fun for me. Um, and just to, and, and I know that that character is me. Yeah. You know, this is what you're getting. You know, <laughs> and um, I I thought about how it would be to do one episode because I just went to focus on that one episode, but it it panned out that it could be turned into me doing a full show. And um, even with shooting the the pilot, it was fun because I learned so much behind the scenes and I learned so much about how the whole, all of this comes together to make a show. Yeah. Um, So it's been a learning experience. This so, process has been a true learning experience. Yeah, and and you said too that you know you just said that you've learned a lot in this experience. Now, how long how long does this uh, from from the from time of shooting to the time of airing? How about how long was that? Seven days. Wow. The 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 process the shoot we shot it was seven days total to film. Jeez. The whole process. And then when how long did it take to get it on air? It took. We were we shot at June and it was on July, the end of July, first of August. Oh wow. Yeah. That's that's a quick turnaround. It's a quick turnaround. Wow. Yeah. Rock and roll. Well, do yeah. you have uh you have anything else up your sleeve? You know, that's just working on the spin off, which is which is huge. Um I'll hopefully we get picked up and get into the first season. I'm ready to, to film Lots of great things, you know, to 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 bring forth in filming, um, and just working on that. And hopefully, I would love. I'm I'm hoping that I get a show that I can host because I think I'd be great at hosting. Yeah. Um, just to just actually go and see the world, maybe like an amazing race type of show or something like that. But just to just. To sh- Debut my hosting skills. Yeah. Be great. <laughs> so I just got my my I got my hand in the cookie jar, just trying to find something to do. But hopefully, you know, my show will will happen, and then I will be ultra busy with that. Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. With everything you're talking about, it seems like it's going to be a really really good thing. Have you got to the point where people are recognizing you yet? Yeah, I that I have a couple fans on that are with um, some newspapers and I was made the front cover and I went, walked into the gas station and somebody said, Oh my God, it's you. And I'm like, Oh my God, really? <laughs> and then I went to, I went home to my grandmother's funeral um, right after it aired, the show aired and I was on the front page of the newspaper and we came out of the funeral and usually that's the time for people to like the hug and, blah blah kiss and, and love on each other but they're all like swarming me for pictures this is family members <laughs> and, and, and community people just came to my grandmother I'm like oh my god y'all just came to my grandmother's funeral not for her funeral oh. y'all didn't took the focus off of her and put it on me oh. but it was great that- you know it's like okay you know I'm signing autographs at the funeral I'm taking pictures at the funeral I'm like and my poor grandmother's in the hearse and I'm over here just having living it up at her funeral oh, you know? man. so it was her death and I made it my moment so did you get any crap for that <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, you know. <laughs> Man, that is uh, that's that's pretty cool. Well, where can we find you online? You can find me at Daniel James the Third um, on Twitter, and also Daniel James the Third on Facebook. Um, I'm doing an online journal throughout this process of the show. Um, it's been an interesting process because I started this whole thing with Hillbilly in June and. With throughout all this process of getting the spinoff, is here it is November and it's like happening like fast. Yeah. Um, Man. Shopping, they're shopping and shopping. So. Have you have you had time to to kind of sit back and and really take in what's happening to you yet? I haven't had a chance yet, but it's been I've been really thinking about it. But sometimes I'm thinking about them like when I'm watching other shows, when I'm watching other reality shows, I'm thinking, oh, my God, that could be me. Yeah. Um, I was watching AMC the other day who, who is actually a interested. Uh-huh. And I'm just I'm like, oh, my God, I could be on AMC, you know, with Mad Men and, you know, <laughs> you know, Walking Dead. You know, that network is yeah. just so cute. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a fright fest. I just finished that up with them. Throughout the holiday, I mean the Halloween. Oh my God, I love my move, my Halloween movies. Yeah. Now, if you got offered an acting job, would you take it? 
Yes. Oh, of course. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'll take it. Um, I don't know if I, you know, how good I'd be, but I think I could do it. Yeah. You know. Rock and roll, man. Rock and roll. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, thanks so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it. I know you got a lot of stuff going on, but, uh, you know, you took some time out, and that's that's awesome. Guys, go check out uh, Daniel James III online. He's got a lot of good stuff coming up. Uh, Hillbilly Hand Fishing episode, that was fantastic. I might have to go watch that again. Uh, and the spinoff is coming. I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to happen with that. So thanks so much for your time, man. appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I'm Iraq. Peace. Revolver Underground.